Okay. Thank you, everybody, for that one. Okay. Okay. I'm a little conflicted about Martin Luther King Day and Martin Luther King Weekend. Not because I don't think it's important to remember him, but because it has become like Black History Month, Native American Heritage Month, and a lot of other months and weeks and days that have been set aside and named for people and cultures who are normally forgotten all year long. And on this weekend, in particular, there are often a lot of breakfasts and gatherings, introspectives. People spend a lot of time talking about the man and his words. But I think if Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King were here, or depending on your personal theology, if he was looking down on us, contemporary words that he might utter would be, I've been dead for almost 60 years. Why are you still talking about me? What are you doing? So what are we doing? Well, I'm going to tell you a little bit about um, my day yesterday. Um, I went to the march on Washington for Gaza, and it was, well, well, thank you, but thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, it was just one protest among many throughout the world. It was a beautiful day. It was good to see the solidarity between so many black and brown and white faces, Muslims, Christians, and Jews, and I'm sure many Unitarian Universalists together for a common purpose, to call for a ceasefire and ultimately an end to the occupation. I felt that being present was the least that I could do, but I'm sure that on my own by myself it wasn't enough, but with so many people there, I think it was something. Reverend Dr. King's name was brought up many times by the speakers. I think he would have approved of the global effort yesterday, not just because it was a nonviolent action taken by those who wanted change, but because the action was protesting something called the triple evils at work in Palestine and actually throughout the world today. What are those, you ask? Racism, poverty, and militarism. All obstacles to beloved community. And we talk a lot about beloved community. It's the name of the sermon today, right? Um, it's in our eighth principle in which we covenant to affirm and promote journeying toward spiritual wholeness by working to build a diverse, multicultural, beloved community by our actions that accountably dismantle racism and other oppressions in ourselves and in our institutions. And one thing I want to point out to some of you, if you were kind of sort of paying attention and if you had the hymnal open, the song that we sang, one of the hymns, Answering the Call of Love, it started out as standing on the side of love. And some people raised concern about the, what some call the ableist language of that musical piece. And the composer said, well, let's change it and make it a song that's welcoming to all. Those are the kinds of things that people do. And in the most recent version of the proposed revisions to Article 2 of the bylaws of the Unitarian Universalist Association, justice is identified as a value requiring all of us to work to be diverse, multicultural, beloved communities where we all thrive. So, King's work should be 
made manifest in our work as Unitarian Universalists. Now, while he did not coin the term, Reverend Dr. King spoke much about it. What exactly is it? Beloved community is a global vision in which all people can share in the wealth of the earth, right? That's a challenge for some people, I think. In the beloved community, poverty, hunger, and homelessness will not be tolerated because international standards of human decency will not allow it. Racism and all forms of discrimination, bigotry and prejudice will no longer exist in beloved community. International disputes will be resolved by peaceful conflict resolution and the reconciliation of ad adversaries instead of the use of military power and might. Love and trust will triumph over fear and hatred. Peace and justice will prevail. That's a lot of stuff. How do we achieve it? And not just talk about it, okay? Well, some of it involves nonviolent political action. And that's what happened yesterday. And I know of at least one other person uh, besides myself uh, who, from this congregation who was there. Some of you may know him, Matthew Morales. Was anybody else here, there today, yesterday? Okay. That's okay. There'll be another one, I'm sure. But that was an issue on the national stage. There are also local issues that cry out our need to speak truth to power, to talk to our elected officials. The Virginia Interfaith Center for Public Policy has arranged for a bus to take people from Hampton Roads to meet with state legislators at the Day for All People advocacy event that's coming up this Wednesday. I don't know if any of you know about it. Some of the folks on social justice might know about it. Um, is anyone going? Okay. All right, I had to check. I didn't know. Okay. All right. And some of that work may even the work towards beloved community, not just making our voices heard to those who are in power, our elected officials. Some of that work may even be becoming an elected official. And one of our own, we heard congratulations earlier today, David Hutchison, for taking that step to help make a difference for all of us on the way to beloved community. I hope your UU values, actually I know your UU values will be with you and we will be with you. Change doesn't always happen due to the forces applied outside of the system but from forces within it as well. But we are also contributing to the creation of beloved community through the work we do right here at Seaview with our community table, our sandwich makers, by sharing our offering plate each week with organizations in the community. We call it social justice. But I like to call the work that we do to make the world a better place, faith in action. Because that's really what it is. And as a people of faith, that means the achievement of beloved community can start right here with a spiritual practice. I have a daily practice that I engage in. Um, how many of you have a spiritual practice? No judgment, I'm just, okay. No judgment, that's okay. 
Now, you can, as a spiritual practice, you could pray. Some people pray. Some people meditate. Some people read. Some people walk and reflect. There's a lot of things that you can do. Now, I'm going to offer something up. Hopefully, that will also be a spiritual practice, but will move us along on the road to beloved community. Each year, the UUA puts together a bunch of resources for something called 30 Days of Love. Okay, another question. Has anybody heard of that? Okay, I see some hands. Okay. Well, all of you are going to hear about it right now. <laughs> okay. It's described as a month of spiritual nourishment, providing grounding and shared practices of faith and justice. Now, it officially begins tomorrow on Martin Luther King Jr. Day, and it runs through Valentine's Day, which is next month. The theme for the 30 Days of Love this year is imagining an interdependent future. A great theme because I think that acknowledging our interdependence is something that makes working toward the creation of beloved community much easier. Each week, the materials will focus on something different, de decriminalization, climate justice, body autonomy, democracy and electoral justice, and the liberatory intersections of those things. Their words and videos have been curated, curated and put together to help you with your consideration, your reflection on these areas. So I'm going to invite you, you don't have to tell me if you do it or not, I hope you do, to take some time out each day to engage with the material. It could be at the beginning of your day, it could be in the middle of your day, it could be at the end of your day, whenever you have a few minutes. And I promise you that I'm going to work on that material with you. And there's another practice I want you to engage in at your, uh, in, in this coming month in the 30 days of love. We used to do something here before the pandemic called Guest at Your Table, and it was something that was spearheaded by our religious education folks. Does anybody remember that? Okay, some people do remember that. Okay. So um, it's something that is run by the Unitarian Universalist Service Committee. But that began as the Unitarian Service Committee in 1940. And that organization was established to coordinate humanitarian efforts and offer to aid European refugees during World War II. And for those of you who don't know, the chalice that we light every Sunday comes from the flaming chalice that was the symbol of that group. Today, uh, it's called the UUSC, does many things to advance social justice and human rights issues around the world. And the Guest at Your Table program is one way to get to know some of the global issues and some of the partners that UUSC has throughout the world. So this year, uh, the, the focus of the guest at your table, the groups for the focus of the guest at your table, are the Foundation for Justice and the Democratic Rule of Law in Mexico, the National Protected Status Alliance here in the United States, the Alliance for Black Justice in Poland, that one surprised me, and Pacific Island Students Fighting Climate Change, something that affects all of us clearly. 
We're going to be posting information about those partners, but this is a wonderful opportunity to see how to engage in a way to help make beloved community a global reality. Because what happens in our world enables all of us to thrive if we pay attention to global issues, not just here at home. Now today, I, some of you, I saw some folks looking at these little boxes over here on the side. Um, Reverend Mark and I would like each household, not each person, but each household, to take one of those boxes as either you go into the social hall or you leave the sanctuary today if you don't decide to participate in the social hour. There's, uh, there are also some boxes by the front door. Uh, and when you get home, put it somewhere where you're going to see it a little bit. Um, it could be on your dining room table, table by the door, kitchen counter. You pick the place. And put your spare change in it every day. One of the, the bits of spare change I got, thank you, <laughs> Annalise. <laughs> she emptied her pocket for me today so I would have a demonstration. Okay. Um, Uh-oh. Okay. I guess we need to put tape on them, right? Okay. And just put some, your spare change in there. We will collect them at the end of the 30 days of love, which will also be the day on which we will be having our what after, before the service? Buddy breakfast. Buddy breakfast. Yes. And for those of you who don't know what that is, that is really a treat. And the church will send whatever is in those boxes off to the EU. SC. That being said, there are many ways that we can engage the world in order to achieve beloved community. And this month we have some things to think about that will help enhance our spiritual development and we have something to do. We have some things to do. Maybe I'll see some of you on that bus on Wednesday, I don't know. The Prophet Muhammad said, it is a charitable donation when a Muslim plants a tree or grows crops and the birds or humans or cattle eat from it. And the work of creating beloved community is much like planting a tree or sowing a seed. It is a gift that we give to the world that we may or may not see in our lifetimes, but it is a gift that can make a difference. And now please rise in body or spirit and join me in singing hymn 95.